Greetings, Skyfarers, and welcome to another episode of Sunless Skies. I, Cobalt Thorium. In this episode, now we're going to try and make our way down to the Clockwork Sun. I don't think there's anything else we have to do there. Oh, what the hell? Last time it turned me around, this time it didn't. Alright, let's go. It's kind of a unique building in that it doesn't... It's not a, a through passage. All the other ones are through passages, at least so far. And I believe that they also don't let you back up, so that's why I just assumed that... Um, that it always turns you around and has your face out towards the stars. So we're gonna hug this easternmost face here because we want to catch any gaps. Oh. Bell's time in the distance time ticks erratically. <laughs> Oh, we got crazy stuff. Getting close to that level up. If we survive. by that something terrible or whatever it's called. Something ghastly. Get away from me. Hope I like you. Get away. What's this? All right. Windswept habitation. The Enterprise of Albion. Uh, I think we've read this before. The state of vacant homes stands here. Uh, uh, they have become tem the temporary habitation of a gang of Skylarks. These homeless vagabonds who wander the windy paths of the sky. Kind of wish that. Unseasoned hours, we don't need that. Sky store for a vision of the heavens. Oh, we could definitely do that. We definitely have more sky stores than visions of heaven. We do have a little bit of terror. We do have extra supplies. How many do they want? Two. Jeez. That's expensive. We'll do this. The Scarlets, the Scarlets have seen more of the heavens than most. Lies, libation, liberties. They pass around flags of something bitter and fiery while regaling you with stories. They speak of windy Ormswald Orms and its intransigent, rebellious inhabitants. Transigents. Can't have that. Of the long-necked beings that wait within the frosty s stones of Skyhenge. Jeez, okay, that sounds interesting. Uh, of the plain wooden posts that stand at the avid horizon. There we've been. Pinned with messages for smiling, heartless gentlemen. Get out of here. Something ghastly is to the south, so we'll go away from that because we'll, our health is not looking so good here. Actually, I wonder if we could have fought that guy. I don't think he's the shotgun guy. The one I'm always worried about. Sweet. 
That worked out well. We're definitely going to strip this for materials. Okay, I think we've had that message before. That actually worked out pretty well. Um, I probably shouldn't be so scared of enemies in Albion. I feel like we're probably sort of on the brink, like where it could go either way. A lot of them are going to be tough for us, but a lot of them are going to be, you know, within our ability to, to defend ourselves. Like at this point, the enemies that we get in the reach are pretty weak. I also want to know what this terror is down here. It's a house we can. Ow. What do we have? Oh, there's another ghastly thing. I also want to see what the ghastly thing is. Whoa, what is this? A weft of unraveling time. Uh, you've strayed into a place where the weave of time is frayed. The sky groans, the borders that separate past and future crumble, and your engine is dragged in. Uh, allow yourself to be pulled into the weft. Uh, you will not emerge and change. You can command your crew to escape the weft. They falter, haunted by times they thought they'd left behind or cowed by glimpses of fate's plans. You bark your orders. Let's do it. Yeah. Then I'm back again. You drag your locomotive away, and don't stop until the past is behind you and the future's in front, as it should be. Orological office in London may be able to tell you more about your encounter. We did gain some terror from that. That's not great. A narrow escape. Risk a direct glance at the clockwork sun. Uh, it's gold of toffee, wrappers, and fire. I have no idea what I can't touch here. Whoa. That is disorienting. Oh, my terror's going crazy. I want to do a once around with this place, though. That terror is not looking good now. Whoa. This place is amazing. It feels so slow compared to it. Oh, so the Clockwork Sun itself is the terror. is a trifle ostentatious. The inconvenient aunt uh, struggles to hide her awe. Let's go some sort. Man, the terror's not looking good. I was hoping it would 
go down. <sighs> the dock is rarely used. It's in, uh, maintenance has lapsed. I think we've done this before. So we could do scavenging with the Dawn Rats. If we go the clockwork sun. Might as well do this, get it over with, see if there's anything we can get. What is this? Oh, okay. A nervous face whispers to you from behind a bulkhead. Help us. Uh, we were brought here to build the Clockwork Sun. A lot of abandoned storerooms. Help us raid them and take your fill. Safety numbers. The sun despises thieves, but its anger can't shine on all of us. Well, I'm not going to set the sun. You got to be kidding me. Uh, yeah, one of the things we wanted to do is sell the tea. Ooh. An expulsion of problematic material. A dazzled sequencer sells buckets of am uh, full of armaments retrieved from azimuth. Terrible hazard. I think we've actually read that before. Oh, here we go. A solitary foreman asks you to wheel the tea through the empty corridors to a storeroom. It is stacked with identical, unopened, dust-covered crates. I think we've read this before as well. Hmm. We have plenty of storage space. Should we just buy all of these? Oh, we got a free ministry stamp permit out of that, too. That's nice. Alright, um... Take a fuel while we're here. Head to the Clockwork Sun. We'll write a report. In response to your question, the engineer shrugged. The day dawns, the sun brightens, the night comes, the sun dims. What more is there to say? Some of them seem so exhausted they can barely stand. They, ins they insist it's the proximity of the, s of the sun that affects their sleep. And I believe that they also turn slowly to glass, right? Um... Let's head towards Azimuth. The engineers wave you onward, shouting something cheerily derogatory about the sequencer. It's mostly lost in the roar of pistons. Uh, the Azimuth. Azimuth is an enormous sundial without a shadow. Uh, its rooftop is... Its roof is topped by a, a golden shark fin... Gor... Goldman? Noman? Trackfin Noman? There are still racks of yellow pamphlets on the walls. The one served as a kiosk selling... I think we've read this before. Um... All right, let's complete the charitable mission. This is one of the missions we wanted to get done here. So you successfully delivered the manuals to Brabazon, no doubt transforming 600 lives for the better. Now they just need some bow ties. A new charitable assignment, thanks. The secretor clasps his hands together. I can just imagine their smiles, he says. Oh, and oh, their wide, grateful eyes. And their misshapen bow ties, crying out for correction. He sends his orderlies to fetch your pavement. There's a glint in his eye. I knew I was right about you. The sequence brought us together for a reason. We should send another package. It's gonna be a mail bomb. Alright, um. 
Another crate is dropped at the sequencer's feet by shuffling orderlies. Here, we have a collection of antique but very much functional pistols, he says brightly. I was thinking we could send them to the London Refuge for the lament for the lamentably parentless. I'm sure the little mites will enjoy the thrill of the hunt. Oh my god. I like this. London Refuge for the l l lamentably parentless. Yes, that is lamentable. Yes. Um... I don't really want to upset this guy. We might just accept the mission without comment. Um, so, the possibilities are suggest an alternative gift. Maybe send food or medicine, or, you know, just some money. He's unlikely to change his mind again after this. Okay. You prioritize your own personal gain. What orphans really want is untraceable gold ingots. He's unlikely to change his mind after this. Accept the mission without comment. The sequencer wants to waste your time and his. That's his prerogative. As long as he's paying, or he can decline the mission. You're growing tired of his burying ineffectual parcels. The sequencer's behest will accept the mission. The sequencer beams. Quiet, eh? No matter, no matter. Overawed by the sun, I expect. Deliver your package to to an orphan orphanage in London. It's nice that we're going to wind up there anyway, so who cares. Uh, Secrets of Charity, deliver well, the well-intentioned package to London, uh, or and uh, you have the 1x well-intentioned package. We could ask the Dazzled Sequencer about his role on the sun. I think we've done this before, but I'm not sure. The only people up here are disturbed prisoners. And exhausted engineers. The sequencer's function. I'm, I'm a priest of the new sequence, declares the sequencer. The brightest truth. The wildfire that has swept Albion. He points at the expanse of the sun. There burns a beacon. A savior. An aspect of God. We venerate the clockwork sun and its immortal architect, our empress. I am here to greet pilgrims and safeguard the souls of our engineers. Azimuth is also the only access route to the sun-shattered dome. An exhibition hall that was built back when we received more visitors. The dome is terribly dangerous, and I advise that you avoid it, no matter how much you hear about the priceless artifacts inside. All right. Beyond Azimuth lies a maze of abandoned exhibition halls, crowned by a magnificent broken dome. So this will take time, might cost us crew, and will give us terror. The Reluctant Ascent The Sequencer obviously takes his role as gatekeeper seriously. He fusses around you, checking you and your crew's gear, tugging on straps, checking for rips, wiping the stained glass goggles with the silk handkerchief. All the while, he spouts endless stream of warnings. Don't enter the, sh the shal shalim Shalimar? Shalimar? Don't enter the Shalimar. Never travel in a group of three or fewer. And resist the urge to sink, no matter how fiercely your throat burns. Okay. And for the sequencer's sake, watch the condition of your suit. He pats you. Th uh, he pats you on the back, hands you a brochure, sends you through the heavy iron, the heavy, heavy iron door to the dome. The current, the state of your suit is now four. Yeah, we've seen things like this before. Exhibition halls built to accommodate sunspotter tourists and sequence pilgrims, and abandoned and abandoned after the dangers of the sun became impossible to hide. 
priceless paintings hang in bleached rags. That's unfortunate. Let's try this again. Hold on. This will I think this will give us an idea of what the different loots we can get are. So Exhibition halls built to accommodate Sunspotter tourists and the sequence pilgrims. And abandoned after the dangers of the sun became impossible to hide. Um paintings hang. <clears throat> paintings hang in bleached rags. Magnificent relics have been left to accumulate glittering glass dust. Is anything left intact? S the stained glass sky has collapsed. An unfiltered uh, sunlight gnaws savagely at your hazard suit. It is currently undamaged, though a little shabby. A scream. One of your crew is staring, is staring in horror at her hand, which is suddenly shriveled and sprouted liver spots. The light can do strange things to the flow of time. And you seem to have strayed into a bad patch. So you can return to safety. You spent too long out here already. You don't want to turn your train to glass frost. Wait, you don't want to return to your train with glass frosted toes. You can search elsewhere. <clears throat> It'll cost valuable time and entail greater risk, but treasure beckons around the corner, and you know it. We can attempt to navigate the bad patch. If you're careful, you can avoid the worst of it. Let's try it. Oh, was there anything else there? I might have missed something. An onslaught of hours. You guide your crew through the patch of lumpy time. Careful. A spot where fallen shards have fallen from the ceiling and have turned to sand. Here, watch your step. A discarded tourist pamphlet is still frozen mid-fall. There are a few missteps, but your hazard suit takes the brunt of it. Once everyone is through, you find yourself in an area of the dome untouched by the previous explorers. A thorough search uncovers an intact exhibit. A shroud of fabric that, even here, ravenously consumes the light. You hear one of your crew gulp. Uh, now for the return journey. Your super suit has been damaged, a few panels have been loosened, and the joints are fraying. Oh, you should tell me what the quality of it was. It said it was four before. But we now have a roll of thirsty bombazine and two more tear. So the other possibility is to pick your way through the glass congregation. It's not a very good looking chance. Years of harsh sunlight have sharpened the statues, turning elbows and finger trips. Fingertips? Not trips. Uh, years of harsh sunlight have turned the. have sharpened the statues, turning elbows and finger trips. Fingertips? My god, I can't read. To razors. You'll need to be agile to reach the other side unscathed. We'll search elsewhere first. In the time you waste, your suit degrades a little further. Your suit's been damaged, glass, the stained glass goggles are cracked, and the sleeve is torn up to the elbow. We'll try one more attempt to navigate the bad patch. See if we can get another thing of cloth. Okay. An onslaught of hours. Uh, okay, that's... That's a uh, same message, but this is new. Your shoe has been damaged. There are splits in the seams. Sunlight seeps into your skin. We gotta get out of here. All right. Well, we got two th two things of cloth, which is I think exactly what we needed to um, to do work orders. Two rolls of thirsty bombazine, two uncanny specimens. So that's nice. Now we can leave Azimuth. Return to the yelling of engineers and the roaring of machinery. Hmm. Okay, so now we can visit the glass house. There's a dozen signs warning you to stay away, each more insistent than the last. The engineers shout, but they're too busy to stop you. An isolated section 
of the abandoned exhibition halls has been repurposed to hold not treasures but prisoners. Each wears a gray smock rather than a protective suit, leaving them utterly undefended from the ravages of sunlight. They sit slumped in unlocked cells, making no effort to escape. Where would they go? Some of the prisoners are shining at the seams. Uh, some have eyes of curdled glass and a fractured face to watch you. A few are singing the praise of the sun, mouths bloody and throats tattered. You're not supposed to sing, buddies. Come on. You should perhaps be horrified, but the song wraps tender chords around your mind and numbs you. Glass crunches underfoot. When you lift your boot, you discover a cracked ear beneath. Interesting. <laughs> I like this approach to the glass half empty. Only one cell is locked, and the man within is neither singing nor screaming. The left half of his body is shimmering, translucent. We could hurry away from this place. You've left the prisoners behind, so why do you still hear their songs? Or you can speak to the prisoners. They either scream or sing. You, uh, you may not get anything halfway lucid from them. I think that this chance is too low. This place is making me nervous. And also our terror is getting really high. So we'll just stick with the, uh, the safe things. Safe, quote unquote. Only the flesh and muscle of his left half has vitrified, not the bones and blood within. The glass is suffused with a thousand fine frozen capillaries, like delicate red cracks running through ice. He fixes you in, with an anguished stare. Get me out of here! Why is it so locked? And his alone? This was an exhibition hall once, never a prison. An engineer must have had to install those bars specifically for him. I'm not going to let him out. It's crazy. We could agree to help the the empty escape. Agree to help the empty escape. Hmm. A barely perceptible nod. The glass in his neck creaks. Or we could... Uh, you can't help him. Allergies acting up. Can't help him. He slumps and doesn't say another word. Well, we'll we'll get him talking first. The empties. <clears throat> the empties conviction. The others would not leave. The others would not leave, even if they could. Their minds are lost. The empty attempts a one-sided shrug, and well. The Empire sent me here because I was smuggling sunlight, sunlight from the Neath. Back before the horizon closed, when I sold it, I told my customers that the, that the light of the clockwork sun was toxic and true sunlight was the only cure. Ended up causing a minor panic in London. I think one of the engineers locked me in here because he took offense at my criticism, though. He, gest he gestures at his vitrified body. I stand by it. I don't really want to help him. I mean, it's a mission. So, I should help him. Because missions are interesting, and that's where a lot of story stuff happens. I don't really want to help an escape convict, though. Or help a convict escape. Well, I guess that's it. See if we still have the option. Looks like we do. All right. So nothing ventured or gained, or nor gained. It's hard away from this place. That's the glass house. Last is the descend 
to the Terp... Terpashore Vault. Descend to the Terpashore Vault. The vaults below are safer. Protected by a dozen layers of stained glass. It's like my Jesse Ventura impression. <coughs> it hurts my throat, though. The Terpashore Vault. Beneath the ground bristling surface, you find a ring of nine vault doors, each engraved with the name of a classical muse. Eight of the locked and barred. Behind signs saying things like vacant or under renovation, or in one case, unfortunate chronological discrepancies. The ninth marked Terpsichore is the only door left open to you. When you enter, your footsteps ring through the dusty barracks and abandoned canteens. These are the engineers' quarters. They are not all on the surface working except one. The broken steward has been working on the sun since before it shone. She's been here far, far longer than any of the engineers above. I think we've done this before. Yeah, we have. Doesn't seem to be anything else to do here. Let's just check our journal. Make sure. Although, the number of open missions is quite sensitive at this point. I have my terror blinking like that. Don't do that. Make me nervous. Alright, um. Right. Mausoleum. Okay, we should probably talk to the inconvenient aunt. <clears throat> Man, there's so many things to do here. We really need to get to Perdurance. Alright. That might be everything from 4. <clears throat> that might be everything for here. We really have to find the pre so there's a ton of stuff. So we should do this, um... This inconvenient aunt thing. Maybe head back to London. We can go to the Ministry, give a billion port reports, and then, um... And at the same time, we can do some other stuff in there, like uh, that special delivery that they wanted of the two cloths and the two uncanny specimens. And after that, I don't know, I think we have to probably deal with this terror. It's probably going to be over 50% by the time we get back to London. Alright, let's do it.
what we want to do here. Five, and we can't buy food. All right, we'll try to get some scouting done on the way home. It will hit this here, and we'll try to go this way. Let's go that too. Maybe it'll lower our terror. A decaying structure savaged by something. Oh hey, we got some fuel. Oof. Whoa! I didn't know that the <coughs> that the crystals reflect your ship. It's kind of cool. We'll just do this scout really quick. So I think we have to go to the the west here. The gloomy disquiet settles over your engine. Morale is fragile. Clockwork sun fills your windows. Its light is as blank and starched as a nurse's apron. Should I be following this or should I just go straight home? I think we're really too high on terror. We should probably go straight home. Help its foreground or background. <laughs> Continuing problem. Chop slide in these lanes. Blazoned with densely lettered signs. Great, I think it's the C. 
second bird. One with the green lights. Bells chime. The inconvenient aunt checks her pocket watch. Well, that's completely wrong. What's this? A thing in the mist. A sudden jolt. I think we hit something, madame. Your driver observes. The mists are thick. Could turn back. Search for it. Keep going. Only forward. You could double back. You use some fuel. There might be danger. But perhaps whatever you hit was valuable. Or perhaps it needs help. You could offer whatever it was to the waste wave. Waste wave occupies abandoned places. It is lonely, but spurns company. It likes toys. Wait, what? Okay, well, we don't want nightmares. Offer whatever it was to the. Uh, offer whatever it was to the storm that speaks. The storm that speaks rages in the night. Covets that which has passed. Reduce terror by not, by 50 but increase nightmares. No. No, we're not. We're not going to do anything. Only forward. Blissful ignorance. Better not to know. Whatever treasure, horror, or debris wandered into your path, you will leave it to the mists. All right. We can explore London. We could set up, uh, We could let the princess set up a salon. She'll be gone for a little while. You will have to manage without her. Poor thing. The princess will leave your engine. You may pick her up again, but only while the salon is open. I think we're going to do this, actually. The briefest of far farewells. The princess sweeps away into the smog. For a moment, her tiara sparkles in a single beam of distant sunlight. She has left you an invitation. It is to the Red Salon. No further details are given. You will have to find it, and the princess, yourself. Okay, right here. The princess sweeps away into the fog. Okay, we've read that. The salon will open soon. Princess is, oh, the princess is opening a salon in London. A jewel in the city's crown. A bright star shining in the smog. Her ambitions are limitless. Her expression when she, when she suggested it, worrying. You can search for the, princess, the princess's salon. You have a name? Uh, that should at least give you a start. Or you could inquire among the establishment for the location of the salon. In the games of the powerful knowledge is currency. But we can't do either of those yet because it's not open. So. We'll do that at a distant time. What does this actually require? 61? That's a pretty good chance. Alright. Uh, the Silken Salon. So there's another princess. Ooh, we're competing. Let's dispose of the sequencer's well-intentioned package. The dazzled sequencer at the clockwork sun asked you to deliver a package to the needy. Uh, the L London produces industrial quantities of orphans. <laughs> Funny. And, and they are stored in orphanages while awaiting export to a work world. Oh, that's sad. Upon opening your parcel, the orphans let out a, let loose a, a loud cheer. A forest of hands appear, grabbing at rusted revolvers and ornate flintlock pistols. Now, now, children, urges the governess to the orphan's utter indifference. A second cheer goes up as they discover the pistols are loaded. What the hell? <laughs> oh my god. Let's explore London, one of the streets. Hoping that I'd take my tire down, I guess not. 
Alright, what do we have here? Okay, this just trades gossip. No, I think all these things are more valuable than what we could trade them for. So let's get out of there. Um, next we could go to the shops. No, we want to go to Stephen Sapphire Yards first. Oh yeah, we definitely want to repair. Fully repair. Not screwing around with that anymore. Come on. Oh, it does not let, let me? Alright, um... Let's go to McQuarrie's. I don't think this has changed at all. visit the stalwart bookkeeper. He's not our type of guy. So, I think that the the option is we probably want to go up to the ministries and then head over to the Moserine Museum or well, Mausoleum, not museum. So we can take care of our terror. So let's go. Brand new ship. I ran into that little corner there. All right, the office of works. Oh, I forgot to pick up a cage to whatever things we needed. Now, thankfully, it's a very short trip back. Let's take T and see if that takes down our terror. Can we? Those are all the same. Let's deliver report reports. Okay. Let's get out of here. Oh, we do have enough of this. Oh, yes. Work order 7777 G. Is we're missing two bolts of bombazine, comma, freshly oiled. Full stop. Must be proof against villages, comma, fraying and fading. That'd be quite quite the oil. We need to improvise. Turns out we don't need to improvise. Find them in the sun. Whoa. Okay, we need two. I thought that said we need seven. Let's do it. What, the sun is now 77. It's still worryingly low. An oil delivery. You're forced to provide your own oil. Extracted from one of the eerie specimens you found in the sky. Uh, the foreman seems impressed. Initiative, he remarks. I admire that. Alright, so here's the new one. We need two caddies of dried tea for the drinking thereof. And none of that mushroom rubbish either, nor the factory sweepings. We want uh, something a bit fancy. I think we can get that blended. I don't even remember what we have in the bank. Do we have extra tea in the bank? We might. Hmm.
Actually, they, they never have supplies in London, do they? They never, like, sell them. You can only pick up, like, not permits, but... I think the Royal Society had tea. No, they have carefully packed munition. Sells your crockery. Oh, they're there. Caddies of dried tea. Alright, maybe we can go to the Mustarine Mausoleum and come down. Let's do it. Explored the upper route yet, so we'll do that first. Supplies. Oh, oh. Are you a marauder? What are you? Good fight. All right, we can investigate the bodies. It seems like the only thing we can do here. A resurrectionist deceased. The resurrectionist haunt memoriam, plundering its graves for corpse goods and cadavers. They sell the valuables to pawn shops and the bodies to disgraced scholars, deranged artists, and grisly collectors. <coughs> oh, these voices—they screw with my throat. Investigate the bodies. Cabin has been packed with gravelly sky ice to keep it cold. Corpses hang from a rail. God damn you. At least we got an uncanny specimen. We need those. Nature is lament. You open a barred door to find a frozen cabin. The windows have been shattered, exposed to the heavens cold. In an attempt to preserve the set of cadavers, too young, too older, perhaps a family. A set of bell jars filled with murky oil contain organs. Bro. Hmm. If we really want to scout, we would go up here and then come down and down this way. Let's do it. I definitely scout too close to stuff. Keep bumping it. What is this? Check it out. Oh, why, you, why is it? Duke and my terror. Elaborate memorial is carved with curses. 
cars, yo. one more island scouted. One more area of the map that we can check off as being known. This place is getting pretty known, actually. And look at that. That's not bad. It's starting to look a little bit like the reach in terms of the thoroughness of the investigation. What? What is this? Oh, we can do the additional brandy. Tires fall on, that's good. Down to two. I hope they have supplies here. Alright. The soaring. So, uh, so, sepulchral. So. I know it's like sepulchre, but sepulchre. Sepulchral? Soaring sepulchral heart, the most serene mausoleum, constructed over cooling embers of Albion's murdered son. The mausoleum was built to house London's most glorious dead. I think I've read that before, anyway. Let's, uh, let's attend the funeral. Hmm. We can attend a miser's funeral. The chapel's empty. The corpse lies largely unmourned. Aww. Well, let's, uh, read this entire thing. Attending a funeral. Few mourners are willing to, uh, to brave the long journey through the Reach to say goodbye to a loved one. Visitors are welcomed, uh, to the extra chairs in the mausoleum's many chapels, provided they carry themselves appropriately. It is a calming way to spend a few hours, basking in the lives well-lived, or taking solace, and still having a future. Okay. I suspect that the Skyfarer's funeral is going to give us more tire reduction, but attend to Skyfarer's funeral. The priest welcomed other travelers to share their stories from afar. Didn't seem to go down too much. Not forgotten. The funeral is a mix of gentle sobbing and clutching handkerchiefs. In excitement at stories from the depths of the high wilderness. You play your part, ensuring that a, fellow's tra a fellow traveler's life is remembered instead of being lost to the winds far from home. Let us write a port report. We could enter our aunt. We didn't really talk to her, did we? Okay, um, Tinker's Sigil. Man, there's a lot we can do here. Um. Actually, we never reassigned this, did we? So, Heart Iron Academy. Iron Veils. Let's do this one. Oh, what? What happened? Oh, okay. Um. Alright, so I clicked on the clay conductor when I meant to click on this right here. But, the clay conductor. The clay conductor has taken a berth in the back of your locomotive. He has made no attempt to personalize his cabin. All of his things, including the urn with his friend's dust, are stuffed into a suitcase that sit forlornly on the floor. That's sad. He performs his duties with plodding diligence and keeps up with the maintenance of your engine. Ensures things run as you would wish them to. And ostensibly looks after the crew. He does not socialize. When he's not working, he keeps his bunk. We could spend time with the clay conductor. Perhaps he would appreciate a visit from the captain. No one else seems to talk to him.
where he could restore the clay conductor's voice. You've overheard him attempting to sing, but he gave up quickly. His voice was gravelly and out of practice. Some nectar might help lu lubricate the vocal cords. The happy traveler. Yes? He doesn't look up from a large volume of sheet music. Slow hymns like the drift of continents made from the melody of plate-shifting earthquakes. You attempt to engage him in conversation. He responds to this with reluctance. He is content for the moment. His days have been tolerable. No, he does not need anything. When you eventually give up and make and make to go, he seems relieved. Let's assign him. But we do have to remember that we should give him some chorus or nectar. Let's talk to the aunt. What's this? All right. She's taken over one of your nicer cabins, which she has ruthlessly redecorated. There's a preponderance of ugly ornaments balanced precariously on tiny tables. Hideous anti... anti... mac... anti macassars adorn every available surface. Your aunt occupies a felt armchair in the center of the horror. <laughs> where she spends her time either knitting or solving truly mind-boggling cryptic crosswords. You can converse with your inconvenient aunt. I'm rather busy, she insists. Perhaps if you tell her something ghoulish, she'll, she'll pay attention to you. You lost a, ter a tale of terror. Good lord, are you alright? Evening's entertainment. She immediately bakes you a batch of scones. She doesn't even comment on the order in which you apply the jam and cream. I know what will cheer you up, she says briskly. I've been invited to a little sorry by Bunty, she pauses. An old school friend. I think she's head of the deniable constables now. You'll come with me, won't you? You'll take your mind off things. She can search for a moment. Though I must warn you, it's a very particular evening. Old enmities put aside, that kind of thing. It's at Carillon. Okay. I probably should just go through all the characters and figure out their little things. Okay, so now we can see what our, our auntie is up to. The smell of baking wafts through your locomotive. Or we could do a second mint. Listen to Auntie's suggestion. She's been baking up a storm. This usually means she wants something. Uninvited. It emerges that your aunt is holding a tea party for those of your crew plagued with bad dreams. You're uninvited. It's nothing personal, dear. They just won't feel able to speak freely with their cap uh, if their captain can hear. They know that you can always trust Auntie to keep a secret. She closes the door. Rude. Let's try this Auntie's suggestion. Possible employment for an aunt. Just an idle thought, she says, presenting you with a new batch of sourdough loaves. She frowns at the consistency of the bread, as though she expects it to act altogether sharpish or what does she expect to get to act together sharpish okay that's how it goes but if you wish to make use of my full arsenal of talents you might want to grant me shore leave at the most serene mausoleum her eyes gleam from behind horn rimmed spectacles I have ideas but if you think I'm more valuable aboard your engine that's up to you your aunt uh, will be able to generate barrels of unseasoned hours for you while, while uh, seconded at the most serene, most serene mausoleum. My God. Punk twister. All right. I think we probably want to get to the special party before we ditch her. So 
And I probably should have asked. I probably should have talked to the, um, the princess while she was aboard the engine too. We can always get her back. Um. What was I looking for? Oh crap. Can't find what I'm looking for. I actually forgot. It's getting late here, so I'm getting tired again. You gotta play this game when I'm not so tired all the time. Get like one or two episodes in and I'm just like done. Alright, um... All right, let's look for the inscribed tinkerer's sigil. The walls are adorned with all manner of ornamentation. Sifting through sigils. You follow the tinkerer's instructions. Quiet window off a landing below the upper vault. Far below, monor, uh, mourners and courtiers, all in black silk, wander in the nave like hosts of spiders. Uh, you take out a magnifying glass provided you turn your attention to the walls. Some quick thinking on your engineer's part douse the worst of the flames. The correspondence often has spectacular side effects. Your notebook has survived with your drawings of the many, many identical broken sigils that adorn the gallery that looks out over the dead star below. You've discovered this the Tinker's sigil. Return her at the Royal Society. Okay. Got a little bit of terror out of that, that's not so good. Um Uh oh. So this time we contemplate the dead sun. The corpse of the Albion's sun is visible from the great rose-colored window. The sun looks back. The body of the sun is still cooling. A few embers continue to glow at its core, a low and sullen red. When Her Majesty entered Albion, she slew the sun with an experimental weapon, an unclear bomb. Then she claimed the sun's throne and dominion. You can't help that as you gaze on the sun. It gazes back. The storm that speaks has noticed you. It's bad. I was really hoping it would reduce my horror. But... Well, this should reduce some. The cheery registrar adopts an expression of practice solemnity and calls for a footman. The footman asks a number of questions about the crew member, name, occupation, beer and niche, candles and how often, flowers and what variety. Eventually he is satisfied and leads those of your crew uh, closest to the deceased to the catacombs of the mausoleum. You are guided by a vast tomb where candles have been lit to the scent of lilies is strong. Crew members interred in a small drawer in one of in one hall of many. Here your crew members, or at least part of them, at least will remain at last. Let's do that. Can we do that one, one, once more? Yeah. Oh, it costs a hundred sovereigns every time, huh? It seems to like have the distance, not take off a fixed amount. So if that's true, then the next one would be six. Six or five. Nope, maybe it does take off a fixed amount. Hmm. 
Hmm. I've already done this, I think. There's only one, we might as well make it zero. Alright, well we got rid of our terror. I thought there was something else we were supposed to do here though. I suppose we could approach the deathless and see what happens. Oh, here we go. Most of the serene mausoleum houses more than just the prince consort. Under its soaring spires, the empress keeps her most favored courtiers. These lucky few are provided with every luxury they might wish, and a generous uh, stipend of ours. The only condition of this bounty is that they hold. Uh, the only condition of this bounty is they are dead legally only. They cannot possess property, nor hold political office as a result. Oh, there's interesting stuff in here, actually. Okay. We well, could visit the macabre counselor. You have unfinished business with her. Might as well go in order. Well, she demands. Do you have my daughter? Oh, that's right. The counselor waves a claw-like hand and turns her attention to an elaborate embroidery of skulls. We do not... Her daughter's at, um, what is the name of it? It's Purse. It's the ecology place. It's not perdition. It's not pernition. <laughs> Perdurance. Okay, we can speak with the Duchess Incarnate. Childhood friend of her renewed majesty, the Duchess Incarnate, was instrumental to the conquest of Albia, replacing the mausoleum and the mausoleum was her reward. See if it does anything. Oh, he actually gains terror. A second Tamora. The Duchess would be a small figure, were it not for the mounds of silk and brocade that come. Uh, that comprise her dress. She glides along the flagstones, a great train of scarlet cloth flowing behind her like the telltale like the telltale trail of blood in a penny dreadful. Today she is menacing the footmen, press ganging them into her mock battles in the Tower Carmine. Fatalities are rare in her battles, maimings are not. She gives you a red lipped smile. A foreman intervenes and introduces you. She is pleased to encounter a genuine captain and quizzes you on all the battles you fought in the wilderness. The glorious details she demands you linger on. She parts with you only reluctantly. Okay. Alright, so the things we can't do now. What did this cost me? An invitation. The cherry registrar holds you a gold leaf envelope, penned in black. It seems you have attracted the attentions of one of the deathless. So they allow you to take on unique bargains for the deathless. Although you will lose favor. With who? The deathless? The bargain is randomized. Excuse me. Uh, you may be able to change which is available by repaying the invitation. Or you can make a donation to the upkeep of the mausoleum. The Deathless do not lack for time. 
They do, however, lack for diversion. Fresh reading material is valued high here. A glimpse of the world left far behind. Will I speak to the currently available member of the Deathless immediately? Is that it? Is that all we can do here? Um, I think we should try to get our terror back down to zero. Jeez, oh, don't make me lose one at a time. Oh my god. Alright. Terror is down. And I don't think there's anything else we can really do here. We should probably check to see if we can get more food, but. So we should do this. Was this here before? Investigate the Chamberlain's disappearance. No one seems willing to state the obvious. The Chamberlain's sudden disappearance is cause for concern. Oh, what is this? Lost favor with whom? The Deathless frown on any discussion of the matter among their servants. But you managed to befriend a group of footmen over a game of cards. It's an issue that's been gnawing at them. With the Chamberlain gone, no one has seniority over the sepulchre, and no one has permission to correct the clocks that go, long, that go wrong. When last I saw him, he was descending into the deepest vault, says one of the footmen, laying down a king and a queen of hearts. Um, we're not meant to go down there, so I thought it was odd. But I'm hardly going to stop him, am I? We can follow the Chamberlain's trail from here to the nave. Descend into the vault to search for the dismal Chamberlain. No one else seems entirely sure which of the vaults is the deepest. Footman advises you uh, to just keep going down until there is no down left. Descent. It isn't long before your legs are aching. The vaults seem to offer much more down than the footman had implied. You passed your last coffin long ago. It seems like there's nothing else down here but dust and cobwebs. There are torch brackets on the wall, but no torches. But no torches. At first, you thank the heaven that you brought your lantern, but much further down, where the steps are crumbling away, you find the deepest vault bathed in harsh, unrelenting sun. Or uh, unrelenting light. In red unrelenting light. Harsh red unrelenting light. The floor cracks and creaks underfoot, as though marble has become ice. Scarlet tendrils have crept, ivy like, over the outer walls. Uh, over the walls. And you pick at them, they crumble like scabs. The trail ends here. Or you could return to the mausoleum above, you shouldn't linger here. Jeez. Nothing forthcoming. When you place your palm against the door, it comes away sticky, hot, and red. As though you'd just thrust your hand inside a freshly soldered, slaughtered sow. The entire vault is stained with something. A sickness in the air and a wrongness in the stone. Blood-like, but not blood. You search for the Chamberlain, or it feels like ours, to no avail. You will return with bright eyes and a cold hand around your heart. You will find that which you seek. What? 
Stop speaking riddles. All right. I guess we could examine her once again. No change. I don't really know what else to do here. Anyway, I think that that will probably wrap up this episode. We've been going on for a pretty long time. Um, I just knocked down the terror once again. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this, and if you have, uh, please like, maybe comment, maybe subscribe. I will catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.